In the last few videos, we've been working on booting off of disk in a rather roundabout way. We're working in 16-bit mode, we're loading off of the file system. In this video, we're going to formalize things a bit more now that we have a general idea of how things work. And we're going to take a look at how we can boot into Grub. And we're going to do this using 32-bit uh, based systems, which means that we're going to be able to use things like GCC and more mainstream types of tools and utilities. So to start off this process, I'm just starting fresh because it's easiest to work from like a fresh set of files, just because a lot of the things are going to be changing. So it's easier to work this way. And I'm going to load up boot.s and I'm going to set the bits to 32 since we'll be working in 32 bits now. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up a text section. And inside of this, what we're going to be trying to do is we're going to be trying to boot into Grub. Grub is a basically boot tool that comes in most computers that's going to allow us to boot off of an operating system. And you've likely run into Grub before when you boot on your computer. If you have multiple operating systems, it's the menu that gives you the different operating system to select to boot into. If you ever boot off of a USB, you'll see the same sort of idea. To boot off of Grub is actually pretty straightforward. What we're going to do is we're going to say align for here, just to ensure that we can align all of our parameters properly in the 32-bit mode that we've set. And there's a few different properties we need to set. Kind of like our last boot process, we need to set a magic number, which is this value here. This is just a set constant that Grub is going to look for to determine where the operating system actually is. Now, in addition to this, we're also going to set some flags. And the flags can generally just be set to all zeros right now. We will do some things with these flags later, but for now, we can just set those to zero as we don't need any special flags for Grub. And then we add on what's called a checksum. And the checksum is just the negation of the, uh, the signature here plus the flags that have been set, in our case, all zeros. And I'll just copy that here. What it's going to do is it's going to use this checksum just to determine that nothing's been like modified or tampered with while it's booting into the system. So this is a simple little checksum for a verification. Next, we're going to export a function start, which will be global. I'm going to make a reference to an external function called kmain, which is going to be our kernel main function. And what we're going to do is inside of start, I'm just going to turn off my interrupts. I'm going to initialize my ESP to a value called stack space. In stack space, I'm just going to define down here as the remaining space that's available to us. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this k main function, which is going to be our kernel main function. And then I'm just going to halt. If we happen to fall through this, we'll just halt here. And I'll just add in another additional thing here, halt kernel, which is just going to CLI. It's going to halt, and then it's going to jump back to halt kernel, just to make sure that it doesn't ever escape out of that. Now, stack space technically should actually be in the BSS section, just because that's generally where we're going to put this kind of data. Now, there are a few different ways that we can actually set up this stack space. One of the ways to do it is the way that I've done it here. Another common way that you'll see is people will often do a res byte of 8192 to set up some space for the stack to grow into. So this is generally the way that we would typically see this done. So what this basically does is it reserves about I think uh, 8192 in terms of bytes for space. And then what happens is since the stack grows upwards in memory, the stack will be just below that and it has space to grow from that point. So that's why often you'll see this kind of res bit here. So this sets up our main function. So basically what's gonna happen is Grub is gonna load, it's gonna see this signature here and it's gonna know that this is a bootloader for an operating system. It's gonna go into our start and it's going to initialize our stack space and jump into a function called kmain. Now the kmain function is going to be inside of this kernel.c file. And really just at this point, I'm just going to set up the header for this file and or the header for this function rather, and then we'll just set up the function and it's not gonna do anything. So we'll, we'll get it to do some things as we continue on here, but for now we'll just have it not do anything at all. And then what we'll need to do here is we'll need to just set up the way that we link our files together and we'll need to set up the actual build to create the ISO to boot off of. So the linker file for this is going to be done as follows. We have an output format, and the output format that we want is ELF32, since we're working in 32-bit mode. We're going to give an entry point, which is start. That's the entry point in boot.s, this function right here. We're going to have some sections as well. So generally, we'll just define out each of our sections 
And the way that this is going to work is we have our initial origin that we want to work in, which is going to be uh, memory location, which I'm just going to copy here. So this is the memory location where we want to place our actual linker to start at. This is the same as basically setting the origin in our previous assembly. We just want to work in a particular location of memory that we know is going to be allocated for this purpose. So that's what we're setting here. Then we're going to set up our text section. And we just do this as follows. We just create a reference to uh, dot text like this. And we do the same thing with our data section and with our BSS function. So we do data. I just realized there should be a star here. There we go. And then our uh, dot BSS section is gonna be a similar type of process. Let's make sure that these are all lined up. It'll be dot BSS like this. And that sets up our linker. Now at this point, the last sort of thing that we need to do is just set up the file directory for our ISO file, which is gonna be the file that we'll use to actually boot. And the general format for this is we create a folder, typically with the name of the operating system. So my operating system is named Jazz. I'll put that in as the name. We then create a, another folder inside of this called boot. This folder is going to have the kernel inside of it or the actual binary that results of linking and building all of this together. Inside of this, we'll have one other folder, which I'm going to call grub. And inside of this folder, we are going to have a grub.cfg file or grub.config file. This is going to have the configuration for grub. So our configuration is pretty simple. What we have is we have a menu entry. This is the name that we want to display for our operating system when it's shown in the menu. So I'm just going to call mine jazz. We then provide the location of the file that we're trying to boot. So it's going to be at boot slash kernel. That's this boot folder and inside of there, the kernel file that we're going to create. And then we just simply say boot, specifying that we want to boot from this file. So that's all we really need at this point, just to get things up and running. Now to actually build this, what we're going to do is we're going to run some GCC commands, which is nice because we're actually able to use a more modern compiler and setup. So generally the way that we run these commands is we do the following, we say GCC, M32, because we want to work in 32 bits. We're going to turn off the stack protector because we haven't defined that function, so we can't actually use it. We're also going to turn off built-in functions because we don't have access to those as well. We're going to specify the file that we want to compile, which is in this case, kernel.c, and I'm going to place it in an output file called kernel.o. So that looks like it's compiled successfully. For our NASM files, we just compile in elf32 mode boot.s, we output it as boot.o. Oh, so in this case, I've got uh, oh, more than one input file. It's because I actually said elf, elf32 like this. I want it like this. There we go. And for my linker, I'm going to link it in elf underscore i386 format. That's 32-bit mode. I provide the hyphen t flag, and I provide it with a linker.ld file. That's the linker file that we created. The output for this, I'm just going to call kernel. That's the name of the binary that I'm going to be working with. And I'm going to provide to it boot.o. I'm going to provide to it the other file that I have, which is kernel.o. So that's created our binary file. I'm then going to move that file into jazz slash boot slash kernel. So now it's actually inside of this directory here. So jazz boot kernel, you see here, this is where our grub configuration is. To create our disk image with grub, we can use the grub make rescue command. This is the easiest way to do it. There's a few other ways to create these ISOs, but this one is easiest. So we give the name of the file, which is gonna be kernel.iso, I'll just call it. Well, we can also just call it, we can call it jazz.iso just to make it consistent in naming. And then I just point it towards the directory that has the kernel file as well as the configuration. So in this case, it's the jazz folder. It will create the disk for us. And at this point, I just need to try to boot off of the disk. At this point, our disk really doesn't do anything at all. So we should just see the operating system halt. Uh, oh, right, I called it jazz.os. So our jazz.ios, ISO. There we go. So you'll see here, we have this grub menu entry and you see the name of our operating system, jazz. That was the name that we set in the menu entry of our config, this value right here. 
So that's how we got uh, this value to display. Now when I press enter, you'll see that it just sits here blank blinking at us. This is because the operating system has now halted. So it actually did boot into our operating system and it is now halted. And with that, we have everything booting with Grub. So at this point, what I'm gonna do in the next video is I'm gonna show you how we can re-implement our print functions now that we've booted out of Grub because we're gonna do things in a slightly different way. Rather than relying more on assembly, we're gonna rely a bit more heavily on C and doing things like writing into video memory rather than using system interrupts to the BIOS. This is because generally, eventually, our operating system is going to get out of BIOS mode. So we're not gonna be able to use interrupts like interrupt 10 and 13. So we wanna find a way to do it without making those interrupts. So that's what I'm gonna demonstrate in the next video. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.